all right guys so back in a new video for tier list this is this is something that the many of you contacted me that you want to see in the channel so it's a tier list for game engines so i i chose here one of the most familiar game engines when you start working in the industry so we're gonna say most of their pros and cons and what their difficulty in use in full production we're not talking about prototyping of course you can put a quick prototype in one month two months and people manage to do it in even less time if you want but we're talking about full commercial production so here we start with Construct 3, one of the most beginner friendly, easy to use engines out there. It's not as easy as RPG Maker or Game Maker Studio. Uh, Construct, it's, it's, it's in the same level, I would say, with Game Maker Studio, but it's one of the easiest engines out there to use. Very clear documentation, tons of tutorials, easy to use. Usually it's used in 2D games. Uh, most of the titles that I've seen from Construct 3 were 2D, not 3D. I would definitely recommend it for simple uh, clickers like 2D games, platformer 2D games. Uh, some people could even manage to do a full Metroidvania commercial game in Construct 3. So I would advise using Construct 3 if you want or you have most of your team like working in the same engine or most of your prior assets and uh, documentations and pipelines and most of the people working in the team use uh, like Construct 3. So I would 100% recommend it in such a case scenario. Uh, if not, you could use another engine if it was like the first time you would use it because Construct 3 have some lacking features. So if you want to use something, if you did not even decide you have no prior assets or prior experience in any engine, I would say you might need to consider other options. Uh, but if you already invested in it, it's one of the best manageable uh, in my opinion, it's manageable because you can, in, in making any production, like larger production, you could face some issues. So because of the sum of the very complex lacking uh, features, you could need to make them your own. So uh, I would say it's one of the manageable engines and you could even say it's a very beginner friendly engine. Uh, Unity, see Unity uh, in, in the high production, for 2D games could go to moderately hard, but going with Unity in 3D realistic video games, it definitely goes to either very hard or brutal. This is due to the messy part of Unity and render pipelines. It has multiple render pipelines. It sucks a lot. Optimization in Unity needs experts that actually know how to optimize video games so it could work in most of case scenarios, most of PCs and monitors. Uh, the accessibility options in Unity are of course one of the best cross-platform engines but again it needs a lot of experience. You need a lot of prior assets if you really want to make a 3D big production in Unity so especially if it was realistic or hyper-realistic so Definitely, if you were working on a three-year realistic or hyper realistic game, it just go to brutal or very hard. For 2D games, it's actually moderately hard. You can make an amazing amount of 2D uh, games uh, in uh, Unity. Uh, it's one of the best and my favorite engines for 2D games uh, because okay like most of my prior experience and asset library is on Unity, but I would advise it because uh, it really has. A lot of features for 2d that you need to make for other engines uh, and I like it for that reason it's very easy for 2d games in my opinion to make a, a very complex 2d game like a metroidvania or something like that uh, yes it's as complicated as any other engine it's just maybe maybe I'm not very biased because most of assets and most of prior experiences in unity but I would definitely recommend to check out other options because Unity is actually not a very light framework to use if you had like most of your computers in the company are weak for your uh, like employees and stuff like that. You might need to see stuff like Godot and uh, like engines like that. I see that I've never put Godot. Okay, that's some problem. Godot could also go to moderately hard because of the lack of uh, the projects that have been uh, like developed because it's a new engine. There's no scale of how 
how much you could do in that engine like there is no big 3d titles or big very 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 big 2d titles or a quantity of titles for godot so it could go to moderately hard just because you don't know what you're gonna face in the production because it's a new uh, journey for most people so uh i would say uh cry engine all right cry engine is one of the most unknown engines uh, out there for some reason uh it's the same engine that was a uh, crisis was developed in uh, multiple other games were developed in cry engine one of the best engines that i used but Here's the thing, the lack of documentation, lack of tutorial, lack of community support to be honest, and the complexity of its 3D, it definitely goes to Brutal. Many people don't understand, it's one of the most heavy engines uh, going in 3D production, uh, especially for realistic games, like if you wanted to make a game like Crisis and stuff like that. CryEngine is a very good engine, but in complexity, it's brutal. You need a lot of work on it, you need very, it's not light framework it's one of the uh, heaviest frameworks out there you need a lot of prior experience and multiple people who had a prior knowledge in the engine because of the lack of documentation you need a very experienced people who work in such uh, areas but again one of the best engines out there for 3d games you gonna need to uh, definitely try it custom game engine so uh, as many people don't understand, custom game engines for 2D games could either go to very hard and for 3D games, you could even scale it above brutal. Uh, custom game engines uh, could scale definitely as what if your intended use for them is. So if you want to make, usually we do not use custom game engines only if there was features that we want to add to our games that are not priorly existing in any other engine. There, I remember there was a video game that they did a 2D game engine for just because they wanted every pixel to have a material so it have a, a very nice graphic uh, like our direction for it so they needed to make a custom game engine for that but if you do not like if you just want to do it because you think it's cool just don't do it it's just wasting of time wasting of a lot and a lot of time and resources making a custom game engine comes in two scenarios either the features is not there in any commercial project or if you are a very big company and want to make uh, different features and not pay royalty fees to anyone because you have your own uh, gatekeeped custom game engine. So this, uh, I would say, doing a custom game engine comes for 2D games that's very hard and for 3D games brutal and one of the most brutal things to do. Uh, it takes a lot of time to develop till you can even develop your own video game. Uh, but it, it definitely, you can tweak a lot of stuff when you start working on your own video game. You, you have the complete freedom because you understand every single pixel in your game engine. You can, you can if, you, if you want a feature and it's not out there, you don't need to make a tool for it. You can edit the game engine itself. So it, it's an amazing thing to deal with. RPG Maker, one of the most beginner-friendly, user-friendly game engines out there. It's very fun for people who just want to start in game dev because of out of passion, not of like a serious production. People who want to do a solo dev, want to make a simple uh, or, or a moderately complex RPG game, who want to make games but want just to test the feeling first before starting in very big productions. I would say RPG Maker is one of the best beginner friendly engines out there. Here we have O3DE. Uh, so uh, this is uh, an open source engine, as I remembered, for 3D games. I've used it before. Um, definitely not went into full production in it, so I'm not talking about prior experience, but from what I've read and from my experience in the engine, I would say it was a very decent 3D engine. It's just lacked a lot of documentation and community support. So it's made the production of 3D games way harder than Unity or Unreal because uh, it lacked a lot of documentation. Yet it was not as complex in production as I've seen the most of the things that have been done in it to be as CryEngine uh, because CryEngine has much more complex features. So I would say it's a very hard engine to use just because of the lack of documentation and community support. Again, even if you do a very accessible, 
easy engine to do if you have lack of community support and lack of documentation and error handling your engine uh, gonna be very 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 hard to use so this is something that many people usually don't consider also the lack of asset libraries for the engine sometimes matter for some studios that use a pre-made asset library not their own asset library so yeah uh, Amazon um, <laughs> many people don't know that Amazon actually have a game engine uh, it was used in the production of Skylands uh, it's one of one of the moderate in features game and just definitely not the best because they are not very involved in the production of video games as much as other people and as other engines uh, i would say it learning curve was moderately hard to me uh, i would say it lacked a lot of features that were in like cry engine Unreal engine and unity and definitely the custom game engines because you can add whatever uh, like feature you want so I would say it was moderately hard to learn it was just uh, not as rewarding as the other engines in full production so I would say it's just moderately hard I don't really recommend going with it it do not have as much support as other engines and as much communities as the other engine so I would definitely consider something else if you wanted it default default 2d or one of the best uh, 2d engines out there it's uh, specific as i as i think for 2d games i've never seen 3d games in it uh it's some people say it's better than unity uh and uh good art, but i when i use it it's actually the same i might say the physics engine inside unity is a bit better in uh, that than default in like accessible accessibility and i didn't i did not actually make a benchmark to see but when I saw a benchmark on YouTube and documentations, Unity scored better in their own Physics 2D engine. Um, it's known that you did because Unity worked a lot on their Physics 2D and uh, like uh, the Physics 2D in Unity is, is, is way better than most engines because they worked on it a lot. Uh, but that does not really as much matters as other stuff and other features than uh, just like a physics engine because a 2D game needs a lot of features than a 2D uh, physics engine. So it was very nice, but it was not as people told me, like it was better than Unity and Godot in 2D games. It was actually just as better than like GameMaker Studio or Construct 3, but at the same level of uh, Godot and uh, Unity game engine. So I would, uh, it's learning curve actually is manageable, not as moderately hard. Uh, it's, uh, it has a very nice documentation to be honest. And there is a community support actually. It's not like one of the neglected engines like the Amazon one. So I would say it's a very manageable engine to use. Game Maker, one of the most beloved uh, engines for indie developers. It's one, it's the one that under terror developed and so it's an amazing engine it's very, it has a very 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 nice documentation coming towards it's very easy to use way easier than unity way easier than godot and i would and you could scale it to actually the level of moderately hard but it's very manageable you could go and write your own codes and make it very complex with the tools that you are making for it uh, you could go to to make it and increase it definitely according to the scale of your project to a moderately hard engine but usually it's very 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 manageable here we have stride stride is one of the actual best engines out there it's just the lack of community support and the neglection of the engine what killed it almost stride definitely like see you see a very nice engine but just because of the very lack of documentation and the lack of the community support definitely makes this engine very hard to use uh, it's a nice engine unfortunately i really like the interface of stride i really wanted to use stride in a full production it's just the lack of support and the community support and the documentation really made it very very challenging to actually use uh, i would love if they 
actually make a better support for the engine i was really interested in making a, a full production in it so i would unfortunately put stride in a very hard thing to use in full productions definitely very hard or brutal engines does not mean you should not use them actually you could need that if you have a very big big production to to do uh like a very triple a double a complex game mechanic and compl complex graphics video game you definitely need something that handles this so i would say it's just like how hard it would be for full productions unreal engine again definitely brutal one of the best render pipelines you get a lot and tons of features for cinematics and uh, like the things that they are adding nanite lumen um you get the uh, meta human uh, and like nanite forge i guess they even did uh, in the new updates one of the best 3d render pipelines again it has tons and tons of features the only problem is it's very complex interface and it's very very complex in optimization you would need experts people who worked in optimization for decades to actually make unreal usable for if you were like a small team for multiple people that even bigger production at triple a productions we saw how they are sucking uh, in the optimization of unreal engine games so it's not something like hidden or, or something like that you just need to spend a lot and a lot and tons of time and in, uh, in the optimization for brutal engines and you would actually unreal is better in community support than cry engine because it has a bigger community so you would have multiple people experience the net a uh, cry engine it would be a bit harder than unreal engine because of the lack of the com the huge community support and the people that has a prior experience in the engine so uh, definitely uh go and tell us your opinion in the comments uh thanks for watching don't forget to press that subscribe button and bell button uh and see you in the next episode